Hi, I'm Chris Black Artist, also known as Evil Bob Ross. Today I'm going to teach you how to do a, a painting and how to light in a landscape painting and how to make the most of a shitty bit of lighting as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through with some diagrams about how lighting works outside and then I'm going to show you how I took a painting up photograph that really shitty lighting. I'm going to use it from a painting that added a bit of life and atmosphere to it. There might also be some ranting in here as well. So the main thing I remember is, is when you're out and doing landscape art, you're not actually painting what's there, you're painting the light that's bouncing off of things. So the type of available light is the most important thing. Obviously in all landscapes, the most your main light source is going to be the sun, isn't it? Unless it's night time, but it might be the moon. But most landscape paintings are done during the night, during the day. What the fuck? I've only had about four beers. And the sun is the main source of light. But what time of day is most important to when you do your painting? Because it affects the shape and size of the shadows. And also how stuff is actually lit. There's, there's times of the day are good for painting and times of the day that are like really bad for painting. Possibly the worst time of day for doing paintings is midday. The reason for this is, as you can see in the graphic, which will change now, the, the sun is directly overhead, the shadows are really small and directly underneath the objects. The sun's at its brightest, so what it does is it bleaches everything out and only lights the tops of things. Whereas you're always looking for a lighting that's maybe three quarters, so that it catches more sides of the object and gives you a more extended shadow. Describes the form better, gives it better shape and better volume. So one of the best times of day to do lighting for a painting is golden hour. This is the hour just before sunset or just after sunrise, where the sun's not quite reached the high point in the sky yet, but it's got a, it, the atmosphere filters the light, so it's got a lovely golden tint to it. And this is often used, like Terence Malick always uses it in his films. It's used in car adverts a lot, because it makes cars look really good. It's one of the nicest times of the day, especially if you've got good sunshine. So then it makes the... It gives stuff a lovely dreamy type atmosphere obviously though if you're in the UK you can't really I mean a lot of the world has nice weather the UK is notorious for its crappy weather so we only get nice golden hours and nice summer light for a very small part of the year so you've always got to make do with what you can actually find which is often not good light but one of the key things is when you're out and about with your phone is just snap loads of pictures whenever you see nice light and take time to notice when it's golden hour or when there's an interesting lighting thing happening because also as well you've got sunset where you get all the lovely reds and purples and oranges and it tints the shadows as well. So you'll another thing you've got to notice is shadows are always tinted the colour of the sky because the sky is bouncing light into the dark areas of the shadow. So you'll find that a shadow might be tinted blue or tinted purple, depending on what's happening with the rest of the sky. Unfortunately, in the UK, it's very cloudy. And as soon as clouds start to obscure the sun, it starts to mess with the shadows. You get a much flatter light that actually flattens everything out. You can see it there and starts to remove all the shadows. So you end up with just this grainy, flat, poorly lit, bland kind of image. And you can't really do much with it. It doesn't describe the shapes very well. There's no strong direct shadows to... It's kind of hard to add atmosphere. It's a really basic occluded lighting. And it doesn't make for the start of a good painting. Especially if you want to capture something magical or bring mood and atmosphere to a place. So always be on the lookout for good light. <laughs> this was the photo I used, one of the photos I used for reference and as you can see it's a typical British day. It's grey, there's no direct lighting, it's completely bland, it's 
killed the subject. You can't see the shape. If you look, the walls are all the same colour because it's the same mushy grey light that's been diffused by the clouds. Because the clouds come in and spread the light around. So it just creates this overall global ambient. It doesn't give you any strong forms or shapes or anything like that. It also kind of just kills the atmosphere as well. It's, this is very typical of Britain. This is just, I'm about to rain kind of sky. There's also not much in the way of clouds as well to really add to the picture. So what I'd done was I took this and I worked into it a bit with a different idea. What I thought, well if it's grey and if it's dull, you can always make the most of man-made lighting as the feature. So I'm, I lit up more of the windows and I made more of a feature of man-made lighting. You'll see all the bulbs around the building and everything like that. And I thought I'll do it in the style of a like a sort of foggy Victorian kind of atmosphere to it. Where, as you'll see, first of all with the fog, I've given it an ever so slight tint of blue. Because you don't really want to just use grey, it's quite kills your painting. With tones, it's always best to add a wee bit of colour to them. And as you see, I've, I've ramped the fog up versus the original image by quite a bit. I've made it quite foggy and quite atmospheric. Now the idea with this is to really pick out the yellows and oranges that's in the windows. To make it, this should make the pub more warm, inviting, to give the contrast of outside being cold and foggy and drizzly and horrible, and inside being all warm and nice. So you could almost hear the glasses clinking or music playing, and as you walk past you'd be like, yeah, I want to go in there, that looks really cool. So I kept the pub as the focus of the painting as well. I deleted all the cars, all the trees, everything, and just suggested them. As you can see here, I'm just suggesting reflections in the road as well. I don't paint them accurately, I just slap them in. Because it always works better if a reflection is just suggested, as opposed to carefully, perfectly doing every reflection. It never looks as nice as one that's just suggested and all broken up with the uneven surface of the road. It took me ages to do all those bricks as well. God damn it, they just... To get the nice effect of those bricks, it just takes ages. There's no quick way of doing it. I mean, I kind of fudged my way through it, but it was still bloody hard. But as you can see now, I've added texture, I've added light, I've added atmosphere to it. I've made it far more alive than the original picture, which was really dull. And now it looks like the place tells a story. And it looks like it's inviting you in, probably to drink and get drunk. That pub, that, the actual Hollybush Inn, is really famous for its pies. It has really nice pies and craft ales, which is always well worth a visit. So while this is painting on, I can have a rant today. Today's rant was about my energy provider, because of course... I've hardly put up any videos. I had so many videos to put up and I couldn't put them up because my I was at war with my internet provider who I think were using some sort of combination of clotheslines, ducks and jam to make their internet, judging by how it worked. They were just gluing ducks to lampposts and running clothesline between them and then some form of Morse code. So that took me about 10 weeks to get fucking internet and now, uh, my ongoing battle is with fucking Opus Energy as well, who are absolutely just fucking... I just despair. Some, uh, You know, I don't mind moving house. It doesn't bother me at all. It's just dealing with all the cock-sucking energy companies and phone companies. And then they say that shit on TV, like, it's so easy to switch. It's so, you just switch. You just, you just call up and you just switch. No, it fucking isn't. They sent me a fucking bill for 500 quid for one month's electricity and gas. I'm not running Buckingham fucking Palace. They just... Oh, we just decided that's what you owe us. I'm like, oh, right, okay. Well, good luck with that then. I shall not be paying that. I don't give a fuck what you do. I've swapped energy provider now so you can't switch it off so you can go fuck yourself. What are you going to do? Come round and take my stuff. Because I've already... I refused to pay their shitty bill and they're already sending like 500 quid for fucking, it wasn't even a month, it was three weeks gas and electric. 
They said I was a company and they said that was their emergency company tariff. And I was like, you fucking arse. I'm not paying for your boss's BMW payment. You can go fuck yourself. So I told them to piss off until they can come back with a decent bill. But instead they sent me an angry letter saying they were taking my stuff off me. But I'm like, good luck with that. All I've got is like an old shitty computer and a dead PS4. If you think you can hawk that to get your 500 quid, go knock yourself out. But I wouldn't be letting any of your fat turd monkeys in my house. I will bitch slap them in the head if they come round here and try and take my shit. My fucking peasant art shit. I've got an old couch that smells of piss. What are you going to do? Take that and sell it. My pissy couch and my fucking old TV. Fuck off. Opus Energy. If you ever want to have your life fucking annoyed, deal with a company called Opus Energy. That's why I'm ranting about them in here. They think they can do that shit. Because there'll be some old people or maybe someone who's like disabled or someone and they'll pull that bully and shit with them and maybe frighten them into paying all that money. It's just absolute dishonest criminal cocksucking behaviour so they can go and absolutely royally fuck themselves. Bunch of fuck biscuit cocksuckers. That's a... I I promised myself I was going to keep this channel mostly to art but... When you've got 20 minutes of video to fill and you're already wound up and pissed up that day and you're already full of fucking beer and you've had weeks of doing battle on the phone when I should have been... One day, maybe maybe when I'm dead, right, and if you go to the other side and fucking whoever's there says to you, oh, what did you do with your, your gift of art that we gave you? I don't know. I didn't do fuck all because I was on the phone arguing with people trying to rob me the whole time. Oh, why, why, is he, why is there not all these paintings? Yeah, because I spent the last fucking 12 weeks. Because that's what I prefer to do when I'm not locked indoors because of the fucking plague. It's like I, I prefer to spend it arguing with fucking energy companies on the phone. Or fucking other ones. Internet companies or any of the other cocksuckers. Severn Trent Water wanted to take 900 quid off me once for fucking water. I'm a fucking water based life form. You cunts. 900 quid and I says to them how did you come to that figure and it says there's other houses on your street are large users I'm like you just fucking arbitrarily made up a number of 900 quid for fucking water absolute fucking dicks so they chased me all the way to Scotland for that shit like uh, the companies here can just make up a number that you owe them because the system will prove you came to that number then. That's what we decided. Oh, fucking, I decide you owe me the sun then. Arbitrary fucking bullshit. So, I move house. Everything goes great. Within a week, found a house, moved in a house, totally settled, all set up, ready to do art, ready to get videos out again. And then I've just spent the whole time arguing with cunts. Arguing as well with people like... Just fucking go, I, I know it's hard to get a job, but Jesus Christ, what part of you has died to make up giant bills and then harass people about them? Where has your fucking soul went? I think I'd rather live in a fucking bin than do that. It's just one of these just fucking cocksucker things. I mean, I, I, yeah, I'd, I'd rather, I'd just go fuck you, I'll be homeless than do that fucking job. Just disgusting. Anyway, as you can see, I've added some clouds to it as well. I wanted to make the sky pop out a wee bit more because it was it was too flat. It needed a wee bit of like atmosphere in that in the sky. That's another thing I do as well. I I don't know if uh, my general anger at dealing with some sort of, it's just relentless fuckery. So the painting is almost like my therapy for whatever fuckery I've had to deal with that day. Whatever grand scale, pro style criminal fucking robbing fuckery. It's almost like they say, oh, you've got like 500 quid in your bank, we'll just fucking have that then. What for? Fucking water. I'm waiting on the air tax. The air tax is fucking coming. And if you don't pay it, they'll come around and put a plastic bag on your head until you pay up. <laughs> well, the better fucking glue a bag over your head 
and say you didn't pay your air tax. You us X amount. X amount of what? X amount of fuck all. This, this, I don't know how many artists in history actually, because one of the things is on YouTube, they do that fake happy bullshit. Like, hey, I'm enthusiastic as fuck and all that. I am not fucking enthusiastic. I'm fucked off. I'm fucked off because I got random fucking bills for hundreds of pounds. Bills I could have spent on fucking pies at this pub. I'd rather have 500 fucking pies. At least then if I was a fat cunt it would be my own fucking fault. No, they just wanted it all. They wanted it fucking all. Like greedy, drooling fucking pit fucking demons. Shit monster Golgothan fuck faces. Licking their lips, robbing fucking people. And it's not just uh, Opus Energy as well. I've had the same fucking bullshit of British Gas. One time British Gas didn't realise that we all lived in the same neighbourhood as well. And they were pulling the same fucking bullshit. And I spoke, and all my pals were like, I just got a bill for like a crazy fucking amount of money. And it turns out pretty much everyone in the neighbourhood had got a giant fucking crazy bill. They just made it up in the hope that some afraid person or old person just fucking pays it. Doesn't that just make you puke? Anyway, you would think that living in the UK there'd be some degree of honesty, but a lot of it is not. A lot of it's like that. I go through that same bullshit every time I move house. Unfortunately, where they make the critical mistake with me is I, I enjoy arguing and I have zero fucks to give. I will just not pay your bill and just cost you X amount of money to chase me for your fucking made up money. Because it's almost like a sport now. All the mayhem and chaos I can cause, they makes me feel better. So I'll just keep causing chaos and mayhem for years. Severn Trent Water, a bunch of criminal fucking cocksuckers as well. So I caused them a shit ton of mayhem as well. I celebrate. See, as well, like, it's, if, if you've got a bill, and you're going to fucking pay that bill, that's totally fine. If you send me a sensible bill, that's fine. I pay my bill for my car, I pay my bill for my fucking whatever. But when you start pulling this sort of crooked bullshit, nah, I'm not, I'm not fucking playing anymore. BT. There's another one. British Gas, there's another one. Every single one of these is on my fucking revenge list for stupid fucking trying to rip me off shit. And if you're not continually on guard from these fucks, they will be having you. They will have your fucking money off you. I mean, one of them tried to take, like, however many hundreds of pounds out my bank in one payment without even fucking telling me. And it's not even like I'm fucking Jeff Bezos. I'm a fucking artist. I don't have money. And they try to take what I have. My fucking pie and beer money. You're taking that shit. So, I've built a comprehensive revenge list. And a uh, Opus Energy, Seven Trent, what, they're all fucking on it. And uh, all my friends are the same. I've got one friend doing battle with fucking Sky TV at the moment. It's uh, Sky TV as well. I don't want your fucking shitty TV. There's so many other places I can get TV now. Go fuck yourself. I'm paying for all of that. Anyway. I hope you enjoyed my rant. Sorry, I just have to vent. Because painting is my therapy. I don't think if I had painting and ranting, I'd probably lose my shit. But I think, I think most artists were over-emotional. Yeah, probably. Anyway, you can see from this, I've added a lot of texture. I've added texture in the sky, rich atmosphere, fog, mist, I've made the road look wet, I added reflections, and I tried to build character and personality and texture into this painting, and from a crappy photo. So anyway, I hope that that helps you when you do your landscape painting. It is good therapy, especially if you're an angry cunt like me. Uh, so you can visit me on Instagram, dead underscore skin, Twitter, Chris Bla Black Art. I've got a Zazzle store where you could buy a card and draw a cock on it and send it to someone you hate. Have a nice day. Bye bye.